Um, hello everyone, I'm Reza Rad, uh, and we are at Microsoft Ignite in Chicago this week and we are seeing a really cool demo of uh, car racing using real-time intelligence uh, and Devang here from Microsoft team wants to explain to us what it is. Hello Devang. Hey Reza, good, good to, to see you again. Good to see you again, thank yes, you. Thank uh, can you first introduce yourself to our audience? Sure, I'm Devang Shah, I'm a Principal Program Manager at Microsoft I pa as part of the Fabric Customer Advisory team. And I focus on real-time intelligence. So I work with data in motion all day long, so that's what I love. Right, that is yeah. cool. So can you first tell us about what this uh, setup is, like what is happening here? Sure. So when we were thinking about, so real-time intelligence is going GA at Ignite. Uh, so, you know, finally we are GA. That's cool. And we said, hey, what's the best way for people to learn and experience uh, real-time intelligence? And we said, let's create an experience. You know, let's not just do a demo. Let's not just do a PowerPoint slides. Let's create an experience where people come and race. And when they race, they can see all the telemetry go into Fabric real-time intelligence. Right. They can build, we can build some cool dashboards. And that's how people can see the power and the value of real-time intelligence. That is Really that's cool. why we thought that let's make it an immersive experience and not just a demo. So that's really that's cool, and I see it's it's been a really popular <laughs> idea. Yeah. So so let's step back a little bit. Yeah. Like what is real time intelligence actually? So real time intelligence is a capability that we develop in Fabric. Now let's start with an example, right? Mm -hmm. So when you go to an airport, yes. when you go to a, when you book a flight. There is an event that gets that gets generated that you have booked a flight. Right. Then you go to the airport, you check in, you drop off your bag, then you go to the gate. Sometimes you may request a special meal because you may have some dietary restrictions. Right. All these are different events. And all these events need to be analyzed and captured in real time because, right. for example, the flight manager wants to make a decision, can I close the flight? Have all the passengers boarded? Have all the meals been uh, boarded on the flight as well? Have all the ba baggages have been boarded? Mm, yes. So these are all the kind of near real time insights. Mm. In an airport scenario, airline scenario, that is needed. Right. And if we, we cannot, uh, sorry to interrupt, but, but we cannot, in those scenarios, we cannot wait for an ETL process overnight exactly, to complete. Exactly. Because we need you, a fast you, response You got time. that right. You right, got that yes. right, right? You don't want to wait what happened yesterday. You want to know what's happening now. Right. And we see this across many different industries, even in retail, right? Mm. Uh, a lot of retailers want to understand what's happening in my store, what's happening on my e-commerce website, As of now, how much yes. sales am, am I generating. And if people are coming to my e-commerce website, where are they clicking? You know, what are the most attractive areas on my website? So if I can start capturing all this clickstream telemetry, all this data in near real time, as a e-commerce uh, operations manager, I can make better decisions in terms of product positioning right. to make sure that people end up in the cart and check out. Correct. And if you go to a retail store as well, you know all, all the passenger, all, all the shopper movements, mm. uh, where are the pa shoppers going, point of sale transactions, inventory monitoring. Because again. If you come to know one day later that one of the shelf was empty, right. you've lost some sales, right? That you want correct. to know yes. near real time it as a store manager critical. saying, hey, one of the shelf is empty, maybe we should replenish it mm. so that you can have more sales, you can make more revenue. Yes. So you want to prevent these revenue leakages, which are across every industry. Yeah, so. you don't want to lose that opportunity, which is really exactly. cool. So, exactly. so in, in a lot of industries, we have that kind of situation. That Indeed. is cool. Indeed. And, and what are usually the components of a system like this? Like you have probably an IoT device sending some information and capturing it somewhere? Well, so in some industries it is IoT device, some in some sensors, etc., which are continuously sending data, so you right. can capture that data, analyze that data, and visualize it, act on it. Right. But not only, hmm. if you look at a lot of applications, you have database systems. Right. Uh, there are updates and inserts happening on databases regularly. These are also events, right? Yes. So when you book a flight, when you check in, etc., these are events. These are not IoT sensors. Right. So there are a lot of applications and systems hmm. and yes. people and uh, processes which are also continuously generating these events, continuously right. generating this data. And you want to be able to capture that in real time so mm -hmm. that you can build these event-driven applications, event-driven workflows, so that you are not dependent on a schedule, right. you are actually dependent on an event. And this is what we are hearing from a lot of customers, that they want to go away from hourly or schedule driven workflows mm -hmm. to more event driven because I want to be able to react in near real time on a business event that happens in my environment. Right. Because then I am more agile, I'm more proactive and I'm more responsive. Correct. And I can avoid for example, you know, wind, wind turbines. You know, wind turbines are also continuously generating events. Correct. Now, if a wind turbine stops functioning, I want to know it now so that I can actually send a crew, get it fixed, instead of coming to know uh, one or two days later saying, hey, wind turbine hasn't been turning for the last two days. Right. Loss yes. of energy, right? Yeah. So you can get ahead of all these situations if you start capturing this data in real time 
and act on it on real time as well. That is correct. And, and um, this is all available in fabric capacity that we use all the data warehousing, lake housing. Indeed, HP, indeed. So if you, are, if you are a Power BI user, you know how workspaces work, how the capacities work. Fabric real-time intelligence is completely integrated in Fabric. Mm. You can create an item, for example, an event stream, mm. which can go and read data from multiple different connectors. Right. You can capture, uh, change data capture streams from mm. different database systems as yes. well. You have Event House, which is a purpose-built data store in Fabric, Correct. which can capture all this data. You can do near real-time analysis, right. real-time analysis yes. on top of it. You can build real-time dashboards, visuals, and these are all just items in Fabric. So right. you can just create those items, build your workflows, build, build your solution, your workspace. Yeah. uses the same workspace and capacity concept, and it's it's your in a, in a familiar environment. Right, that is cool. And and is there like I know that all of these are available even from lowest capacity like F2. Yeah. Is there any specific like recommended capacity and higher you would suggest for real time, or it really doesn't matter depending on the logic? So that's a great question, Reza. Uh, Imagine this, you're going to have a service mm -hmm. which is going to continuously read data from right. one or many sources, right? Mm -hmm. So there is some compute running which is continuous, right? Mm -hmm. Plus on top of that, if you want to do near real-time insights, calculations, mm -hmm. aggregations, you want to manipulate your data, transform your data, reshape your data, then you want to do some more calculations These in a Power BI report or real-time dashboard, yeah. you have compute which is running all through, all through the right. whole life cycle, right? Yes. So, it will require some additional capacity. So Makes F2 sense. might be too low. Yes, you might yeah. not be able to do a lot with F2. Yeah. But we've had customers who are running these kind of workflows on F8 or F16 oh, as really? well. Okay, and the determining factor is the amount of data that you want to process. Volume. If you are, volume, exactly. So yes. if you have so you know, a few gigabytes of data, mm -hmm. you can do it in as low as F8. You know, right. It will work just fine. Uh, but if you, for example, say, hey, uh, we have customers who are pushing like 10 terabytes of data every day. Right. They cannot do it in F8. Yes. They're yeah. going to need something more. So <laughs> yeah, that then, is correct. Then you can, um, you know, as per the fabric capacities go, you'll have to go to F64 or something more like that. So awesome. That's it, good. The, the key factor that you have to keep in mind is the amount of data that you want to push to this whole real-time pipeline. Correct. Right. That is a determining factor. Right. Okay, that's cool. So, so thank you for that. If yeah. we go back to this demo, how the setup is here. So you are sending this information into like an event hub, or what is the setup architecture? Like? Awesome. So let's let's talk about that. So what you can see behind us is uh, the two race car rigs. Yeah. Uh, next to the two race car rigs, if I can point, there are two laptops. Right. So what we are doing is we have set up Xbox. Yeah. And right. we are running Forza as a gaming, uh, as the game on Xbox. Right. Uh, Forza is sending data to these laptops which have been set up. Right. So what right. racers come is racers come. They register themselves, and they uh, and uh, and when they start the race, um, Xbox will start sending data to the computer or the right. laptops, and the laptop will start sending data to the cloud, right. which is Event Hub in uh, in Azure. Mm -hmm. From Event Hub, the data is going into Fabric. Correct. Uh, so we have Event Stream, which is reading continuously data from this Event Hub. Mm -hmm. data is arriving in an event house. Uh, this data for, you know, if you want to go a little bit on te technical details, yes. uh, Xbox is sending JSON messages, mm -hmm. which are packed JSON messages in arrays. What we are doing is, as the JSON messages are arriving, we are exploding these arrays so that we can start accessing the different fields. Right. Because, uh, for example, Xbox is sending what was the brake, uh, I know what was the brake, what was the gear, what was the speed, what was the throttle, acceleration, right. etc. So it sends many, dis many of these different parameters. We are capturing some of these parameters and visualizing this in a real-time real dashboard as well as Power BI report. Right. Now, before the data gets visualized, we need to do some reshaping of the data because it's all packed inside a JSON. And you know, uh, it takes some time to uh, process JSON. But we are processing all this in near, near real time Correct. so that we can access this data more easily for the different reports and, yeah, reports and cool. dashboards. So that's, that's the end-to-end -end flow we have designed. That is a really nice flow. And uh, tell us also how much uh, data you gathered in this couple of days. Yeah, well, uh, when we started, we did not know how much data we would have. Right. We did not know how much, uh, how many racers are going to come at a large conference like Ignite, which I think is a very common business scenario as well, right? right. When you have a website, when you have a store, you don't always know how many yes, people are going to yeah. come, how many people are visitors are going to come. So you you need something that can like scale up and scale down with you, right? Right. Yes. Uh, so what we what we have seen is in last two and a half days or two days and couple of hours, uh, we've had about. 
um, 260 racers who have come by right. and we've collected nearly 582 million rows. That so is that's the number of rows which have arrived in the last right. two and a half days. And this is the data that is being processed in near real time and also visualized using these time charts and all, all kinds of really cool charts cool. that we have out there. Yeah, that is really cool. Yeah. We, are having, we are going to have a separate video of this. Yeah, you should, you should show those visuals. Yeah. I think they are pretty cool. Yeah, and, and then the, the other thing, like what capacity this runs under? Oh yeah, uh, so we are running currently on F64 capacity Okay. and uh, on day one uh, F64 was only 41% utilized. Right. So, okay. uh, to, we are on day three today of Ignite. Day one was 41% utilized. Day two, I saw the report last night because every night this is what I'm doing, checking, right. hey, how is my capacity doing? And last night it was about 67%. Right. And now we will see how, how, how far we are. That now, cool. you may ask me, it's like, why is the capacity usage increasing? Because the amount of data that yeah. we are holding and processing and gathering is also increasing, right? That is so, correct. that is why we are using a little bit more capacity. But, that is correct. Uh, to be honest, uh, I did not know if F64 would be enough, but I'm very, very happy and yeah, surprised and uh, very confident that, good, you know, yeah. Fabric is really capable of processing this kind of live environments, live production-like environments, yeah. processing this amount of data. Mm. And guess what? I haven't had a single issue. That is good. Nothing has gone wrong. Everything has worked beautifully. So that is good. I mean, race car... Uh, test is probably one of the best tests you can, you yeah. can see. If it was failing, people would not be happy. Yeah. Uh, one last thing, like what is the best place for people to go and learn about real-time intelligence? Awesome. So, you know, with Reza, we, have, we are delivering labs at Ignite. Yes. So these labs are also publicly accessible on our docs page. Right. So okay. anyone who wants to try these labs or tutorials are available on docs mm -hmm. page. Uh, we also did a tutorial at Fabric Conference in uh, in Stockholm. Right, yes. That tutorial is also available as uh, as a GitHub repo. So if anyone wants to try that, they can do that. Right. We yeah. have learned modules on real time intelligence. Cool. We have applied skills in DP seven hundred. So if someone some want, some people want to learn and then also get certified on real time intelligence, they can appear for DP seven hundred. And I know a lot of MVPs assist community Correct. in training and preparing for DP seven hundred as well. So that right. that can be done. And you don't have to remember everything. If you just go to aka.ms, hmm. real-time intelligence, you will find links to all the documentation, all the blogs, even customer stories. Right. So if people want to see, you know what, how other customers are using real-time intelligence, we have a number of different videos and blogs and articles which can point to some use cases of how customers are using real-time right. intelligence. So okay. aka.ms slash real-time intelligence yeah, is the we'll, place to go. We'll put that link uh, yeah. down, down below. Okay, yeah. now one, uh, one last thing, like the certification that you mentioned. So yes. that would be like the, the certification related to real-time intelligence, right? Indeed, DP indeed, DP700. Right. Okay. Indeed, cool. related to real-time okay. intelligence. So everyone make sure that you check out that certification. It is a still beta, but it is a great certification to do. Uh, any last words for our audience? Well, I would say, if you're not at Ignite, then uh, please go and try real-time intelligence tutorials, labs. The best way, according to me, with, I work at Microsoft, but best way for to test any technology, evaluate technology, is to try it. Try it on a use case, try it on a sample data, see how that works out for you, and that's the best way to go. And my belief is, my personal belief is, data is always generated continuously. That is right. We batch it. Right. Yes, yeah. So, and if I go and ask any user, for example, if I ask, uh, uh, you know, uh, Reza, yeah. you run a YouTube channel. Do you want to know how many viewers were there yesterday, or you want to know how many viewers there were now? now? As of now. Yes. Now. So, yeah. I think we are in the era and generation where mm. people want insights now, and they they want to be able to react now, Correct. and they don't yes. want to react on old data. And I think this is the movement we are seeing, and I'm, you know, that's a movement we want to drive as Microsoft. Right. So. You know, if you have use cases, if you want to reach out to us, you have MVP community, you can also reach out to us uh, in different ways. If you know, talk to your Microsoft account teams, talk to community members, we are accessible on LinkedIn, GitHub, etc., and we'll be happy to help you. Awesome, that's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank it you. was really nice. Thank you, Reza. You. Thank you for this opportunity. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Until Thank the you. next bye -bye. video, bye.